Okay, um, so I just realized that I goofed that uh, for the homework gets due uh, tonight, uh, section uh, 4.3. Um, okay. So the very last problem. Um, <laughs> I just deleted it. Um, now, because uh, I meant to have problems only featuring second order equations, this was a third order. And I've gone through and, because I haven't, first of all, get to give me all the problems and I go through and remove certain ones. And I thought I'd removed every single one ahead of higher order equations, but this one slipped by me. So, sorry about that. Um, I'm not sure um, how this affects those of you who've already started the assignments, I'm going to uh, pick someone and just take a look and see what it does. Um, okay. Because when I went to delete it, like it didn't give me any like warning or anything. Um, so I pick someone out who has already been working on the set. Um, Okay, so that's strange. It only shows now 11 problems instead of 12, but it still shows 12 from a total point value. Um, okay. But it only shows 11 problems, like there should be. Um, okay. Let's see, yeah, because yeah, each problem is worth just one point. So... Um, Okay, what I'll probably have to do um, later is, since it seems to be scoring it out of 12, it's not many problems originally, I'll probably have to go through and just add one point to everybody. So, um, anyway, I'll make sure that nobody gets adversely affected by this. Um, okay, so no need to talk about that problem. Now, the other one that I have a question about, um, actually, let me get a problem number here. Number, no, oh, it's number 10. Okay. Um, oh, uh, nine. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, Actually, having seen your answer, um, you actually have the right answer, except, um, <coughs> all right, so th th this would be good advisory for everyone. So here's the problem, as stated. I better not have a marker crap out on me. Uh, 4dy dt minus 5y is equal to 0, and some initial conditions. Um, now, um, most other problems, actually, if I look through the rest of the set, um, yeah, every single problem in the homework, so this is number nine, every problem up to this point has a solution, y is a function of x, but look what we have here, t. So, uh, So you have y of t. So I can, and I, comparing your answer to the correct one, just change x to, to t and you're good. Okay. Yeah, so, so you were doing it right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I've seen that happen now and then where uh, someone loses track of which, what's the independent variable. And I always do t in classes because these are initial value problems. And But, uh, but for a problem to problem basis, we going to take a look at which variable it is. Um, well, while on the subject, uh, any other homework questions? Okay. Um, do, and, get, um, do we get a uh, first point from the normal, normal solving behavior? 
Um, so, so what I will do is, uh, because what my concern is that when I looked at someone's set, it shows 11 problems, but it's, being, it's scoring it out of 12. So um, I'm not sure if, because, because I've deleted it, if someone's already done it, I don't think I have any way of knowing that, unfortunately. So um, and what, what I can do is I can make sure that everyone at least gets credit for it. Um, but I, 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 don't have, I don't have the information to see if someone gets extra for it. Um, sorry about that. But, um, all right, so I'll... Okay. So no one will be adversely affected, I'll put it that way. <clears throat> okay. Um, now, to prepare you all for the homework that's being put out for this this week, well, do well. Okay, so what I cover today will be due Thursday, and then what I cover Wednesday would normally do be due following Monday, but that's spring break, so it'll be due the Monday after that. Um, so you'll have a lot of time to do that. Um, so. The next test, test two, is two weeks after spring break. Um, so let's see, uh, 16, 18, 25, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, <laughs> um, whoops. <laughs> no. mm. So, sorry, but if it really is a test, uh, I won't rule out having some sort of April Fool's joke, though. <laughs> On April Fool's Day of uh, 2013, um, I received a letter from the university president saying that I'd gotten tenure. I was like, this better not be a joke. Uh, <laughs> and thankfully, it wasn't. Um, okay, so this week, we're going to look at um, non homogeneous. Differential equation. So something of this form: y double prime plus some coefficient, y prime plus another coefficient times y equals g of t, where this is non-zero. So last week we looked at the case where that is zero. That's the subject of a homework give uh, due tonight. But what happens if we throw this in? We may have some initial conditions. Um, Okay, now, um, the solution will have a, uh, have this form. Y of t is first a homogeneous solution plus a particular solution. So, the homogeneous solution is where you Solve the case for the same problem except g equals zero. Now that is what you've just been doing. So, um, so you have to actually do that first. Um, and then you have this part that's called a particular solution. Okay. Um, so first thing I'm going to give you some general steps, and then we'll focus on one of those steps in particular. So. So the very first thing you do is you go back to uh, the same equation with zero on the right hand side. Um, and the result of that is your homogeneous solution, yh. And that has this form. It's a constant times y1 plus a constant times y2. 
All right, so this is what you've just been doing. Um, and you get these. So um, from a characteristic equation, that's where you find the roots. And depending on whether roots are real, complex, or repeated, um, and you have your sines or cosines or exponentials, uh, everything I talked about last Wednesday. And then you have these constants. And for now, we're not going to do anything with those constants. So that, that's so that's the first part of the uh, solution. Um, there may be pro problems where um, the coefficients p and q are not constant. In that, in, in that case, you don't have any way of finding y1 and y2. They may be given to you. Okay. So um, once you have a homogeneous solution, the next thing you do is find a particular solution of the original problem, uh, so, so yp. Um, and you will see two methods of uh, doing that. So the first method is called the method of, I am not happy with this method, uh, undetermined coefficients. So that's the subject of section 4.4. That's what I will cover today. Um, and then the second method is variation of parameters. All right, so that is uh, section 4.6. I will cover that on uh, Wednesday. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, um, so use one method or the other. Um, Undetermined coefficients require that p and q are constant. Um, so if, so if, if they're not constant, you must use variation of parameters. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so once you have your particular solution, um, then you have your solution y you can put together. You have both pieces. So you just add them together. Um, and at that point, you figure out the values of C1 and C2 from initial conditions, if you are given initial conditions. Otherwise, you can just stop right here. Um, it's important that you wait until the very end to account for the initial conditions. Uh, because if you do that right here, you're not taking this particular solution into account, you get the wrong values. Right, so, so this is your general approach to solving um, any equation that has a non-zero g uh, on the right side. So in other words, this is a part of, notice there's no y here at all. It's just a function of t by itself. So whenever you have that, make sure it's on the right-hand side. Uh, because everything else uh, will depend on that. Let's see if I have a better marker. So now I'll show you method of undetermined coefficients. By the way, the problem that I deleted is third order equation. How you would solve that is your character equation would now be a cubic equation, so you'd have three roots. So for instance, if you had three real roots, you would have three exponentials uh, and, and so forth, but there's a bit more to it than that. But that's it's it's not much different from uh, uh, 
a second order case. Okay, so all right. So how do you? So what is the method of determining coefficients? Um, so what you do is you use the form of your function g of t. Find the form of your particular solution. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, make a uh, chart right here, um, and uh, so based on what kind of g of t you have, um, you'll know what to put in your particular solution. Um, now. I want to emphasize, if g of t has several terms to it, so you have, like, for instance, g of t would be e to the t, and then plus t squared, and then plus sine t. So if, if you have several terms, um, you can consider them separately. So this chart I'm going to make will have only one term in G. So you figure out what a particular solution looks like for each term, and then you can add all those together. And that's what we'll see in examples I'll do later. Okay. Now, so our first case, if G of T is a polynomial, now, um, this, this method is a, all about pattern matching. You give it a G of T, trying to see which pattern it fits. So first case to look at is a polynomial of degree n. So in words, that's what you're looking for. Okay, um, so if you have something of that form, then here's what your particular solution looks like. Okay. Whoops. That should be a n minus 1. All right. By the way, math is always case sensitive. These a's are not these a's. Again, always case sensitive. Um, OK. So if g is a polynomial degree n, then your particular solution is also a polynomial degree n times this factor, t to the s right here. Now, what is s? s is the number of times that 0 is a root of the characteristic equation, uh, r squared plus pr plus q is equal to 0. Because when you in the process, you look at what's on the, the left board there, you already have your homogeneous solution. You already have your equation. Um, so, so you check. Is 0 among those roots? Time or twice. Uh, so S is all, it can only be 0, 1, or 2 for a second order equation. So when that happens, your particular solution is a polynomial degree n, and you might be multiplying by t or t squared, depending on whether it's zero is a root or not. So that's a common mistake to, to leave that out. So be careful about that. Um, and these coefficients will be unknown. These are known because you're fitting g of t to that form. But 
This is why the method is called undetermined coefficients. At this point, all you have is a form of the particular solution. And what you will do is substitute this into the original equation. And that will give you a system of equations <laughs> for these undetermined coefficients. So that's where the method gets its name. Uh, these capital A's are literally the undetermined coefficients. Okay. <clears throat> now I'll, I'll have you know, several examples um, after I go through the procedure. But first I need to talk about, okay, this is one case where G is a polynomial. But what if G is not a polynomial? We can't handle all cases we might see, but... Um, there are several uh, that we that we can do. Exactly the same situation as over there. You're just going to multiply by e to the at. Um, so you're going to have this factor t to the s that I'll talk about in a second. And then you have an unknown polynomial of degree n. Times e to the at. But now... S is the number of times that, that A, in other words, the coefficient from the exponential is a root of a characteristic equation, R squared plus PR plus Q is equal to zero. All right, so it's so no longer dealing with zero, it's going to be A. Sorry, what? That's P sub n. Yeah, so it's general notation from polynomial degree n. Oh. You can put this n over here. Yeah. yeah. Well, you'll have it before it looked like I was an exponent. It's definitely not. Okay. Um, Okay, one more scenario. Make sure this is still recording. Okay. If your function g of t is of degree n, so that same form, times. Um, E to the A sine BT or some polynomial degree N times E to the AT sine BT. So either situation, um, then uh, 
your particular solution is first you have well something similar to the other cases. So some unknown polynomial degree n times e to the at cosine bt, same t to the s, and then another unknown polynomial of degree n. So use coefficients capital B's for this case, times e to the at sine bt. So if your g has either a cosine or a sine in it, your particular solution has to allow for both. Um, so you could have one term like before but with a cosine, and then another term like before but with a sine. Um, and um, in this case, if a TDS, S is the number of times that A plus B I is a root of your characteristic equation. So, which is going to be a root at most one time. So, so S is going to be 0 or 1 uh, in this case. All right. So, um, so for each term in G, you go through these scenarios to determine which one fits. Definitely one of them will fit. Otherwise, it's a variation of parameters problem. Um, and then, once you have yp all set, you substitute it into the original differential equation, and then you'll get equations to solve, so algebraic, algebraically, for all your unknown, uh, your undetermined coefficients. <clears throat> Actually, one thing I want to check here. Um, Since uh, sometime during during spring break, I will make up the uh, second uh, practice test and put that out there. Um, okay, um, so I just wanted to confirm from last time. Um, <clears throat> so on the test. I will have a chart that describes these cases, um, so you don't have to memorize all of this, but still you have to be able to make use of that chart in a timely manner uh, to see you know, which, which pattern applies and, and what to do from there, plus all the algebra that will follow. <clears throat> right. So now I'll do some examples. So the problem is y double prime minus 2y prime minus equal to 3t. Um, so get your solution to the homogeneous problem. So you solve y double prime minus 2y prime minus 3y equals zero. So initially you're going to forget about the right hand side. Um, our characteristic equation, so it's r squared minus 2r plus minus 3 is equal to zero. Um, how does that Factor. This one does factor nicely. Any 
anyone? Yeah. All right, so we have roots of minus 1 and 3. Um, so the whole, so yh, so the first part of your solution, that's going to be a constant times e to the minus t plus another constant e to the 3t. So this is the first piece of your general solution to the original problem. <clears throat> okay. um, now, um, so the second step. is what is the form of a particular solution? Um, so what you see here, so things to look for, is there an exponential? Is there a sine or a cosine? Um, so the answer to those questions will determine which of those three scenarios applies. Uh, there's no sine or cosine, but there is an exponential. So uh, from the other board, the, the second scenario is what would apply. So g of t, um, which is 3e to the 2t, fits this form, a0 e to the at, where little a is equal to 2. Okay. <clears throat> so in other words, uh, so you're checking. Is there a polynomial de degree n times an exponential? Yes. In this case, because it's only a constant, it's a polynomial of degree 0. So in this case, thankfully, you only have one undetermined coefficient. That's this capital A0 here. <clears throat> All right. So then. Your particular solution is t to the s. Um, oh, sorry. Based on my notation, the upper border should be a lowercase um, a0, and that is equal to 3. In your particular solution, you have a polynomial of degree n, and n will be 0 in this case, so it's only a constant, times e to the at, based on what I have written over there. But now I can fill in some particulars. So little a is 2, so it's e to the 2t. You have this undetermined coefficient, capital A0. And then s is the number of times this coefficient, in this case 2, is a root of a characteristic equation. So make sure you check this value against your roots over here. In this case, it is not among them. There's no overlap there. So s, sorry, it should be an s, I apologize. s is equal to 0 because 2 is not a root. So I guess I left a blank. I meant to fill that in. So. So it's t to the 0, which is 1. So that is the form of your particular solution in this case. <clears throat> so, so which scenario applies? You know, based on whether it's an exponential, sine, or cosine, or in some cases both of them. Um, Whatever is multiplying your exponential over sine or cosine, or, or it's a polynomial by itself, determine the degree of a polynomial based on whatever powers of t are present. Right now, there are no visible powers of t, so n is equal to 0 in this case. So, um, 
So we have a constant times e to the 2t. Um, so your particular solution will be a constant times e to the 2t. And because 2 is not a root of a character's equation, we don't have any power of t out front, otherwise we would. So questions about how this form was arrived at. Now the messy part. Well, actually, in this case, it won't be too messy because there's only one unknown. <clears throat> we have to solve for capital A0. Solve for any internal coefficients you have by substitution. So in other words, you're taking yp, which is equal to a0e to the 2t, is substituted into y double prime minus 2y prime minus 3y is equal to 3e to the 2t. All right. So you're substituting yp for y throughout. So that means you need its first and second derivatives. Let's just, you might as well just compute those right off the bat. Um, what is the derivative of yp. Keep in, keep in mind that uh, a0 is just a constant. Yeah, so if you take the derivative of e to the 2t, that brings in a factor of 2. So you have 2a0 e to the 2t. All right, and then again, difference again, it induces another factor of two, so now you have four. Okay, so now you can uh, put all these into the differential equation, and what you get is so 4a0 e to the 2t for y double prime minus two first times first derivative. Um, minus 3 times a0 e to the 2t, and that is equal to 3 e to the 2t. <clears throat> okay. And then you simplify as much as you can. Um, one thing that always happens when you have these exponentials, when you take a derivative of an exponential, you always have the exponential itself times some other things. So every term is going to have an exponential. Notice there's an e to the 2t in every single term. So I'm just going to cancel those. So you're going to have 4a0 minus 4a0 minus 3a0 is equal to 3. Uh, these terms cancel. So what is capital A0? Because we have this. Um, so you divide both sides by minus 3 and you get a, equal to, a not equal to minus 1. So now we have a particular solution specified in full. So it's going to be minus e to the 2t. So now you can put that together with your homogeneous solution. 
So we had the homogeneous solution before, so that's a constant e to the minus t plus another constant e to the three t. And then we should add in a particular solution, so that's minus e to the two t. So that is your final answer for this problem. That, uh, so that is the general solution of the original non-homogeneous equation, this equation. If you were given initial conditions, then you would have to uh, find y prime of t and also uh, you know, substitute in t equals 0 to both and get values for c1 and c2. Um, okay. so, so questions about what happened here? Right. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is change the right-hand side and see how it affects the solution process. So so instead of 3e e to the 2t, what if I have Um, minus 3 t e to the minus t. So what would happen in this case is, well, this part would be no different. That only involves the left side. Um, so over here, all this is going to change now. So g of t is minus 3t e to the minus t. So because there's an exponential, um, it fits a form where you have p1 of t e to the a t. So you have polynomial degree 1, which in this case is minus 3t. And then a is equal to minus 1. <clears throat> so the particular solution is equal to t to the s times a polynomial of degree 1. So that would be a1t plus a0 e to the at. Now, in this case, a is equal to minus 1. So I'll fill that in. Um, but then there's a matter of s. s is the number of times minus 1, the coefficient of the exponential, is a root of a characteristic equation. So once again, you compare this value with the roots that you have from a homogeneous solution. So what would S be in this case? One. Yeah. So because we're looking at how many times minus 1 occurs as a root. By the way, so here you all put out answers, more examples I can go through. So S is 1, so I have T, A1T plus A0, E to the minus T. Okay, so that's the form of your particular solution. But what you might as well do at this point, go ahead and take that T and just distribute it. So it's A1T squared plus A0T times E to the minus T. So that is what we're going to substitute. We're not going to have two unknowns, a0 and a1. Now, so the reason why this s is important is, notice I'm going to have terms involving t e to the minus t and t squared e to the minus t. There's no e to the minus t by itself. Why is that? Because if I have a constant times e to the minus t, what's going to happen? I'm going to substitute it into here. And what will I get? I'll get 0 on the left side. 
So why? Because e to the minus t is a solution of a homogeneous equation. So, uh, so it cannot make any contribution to a particular solution. So that's why it's very important to make this check. That if you have some exponential here, or an exponential times a sine or a cosine, uh, or even if there's nothing, and you do zero is what you're checking. Whatever root you have here, you must check for overlap with the roots from the homogeneous problem. So um, otherwise, your particular solution of the wrong form, you substitute it in, and on the left side, you get zero. Therefore, no hope of matching against what's on the right side. <clears throat> OK. So now, this will be substituted. So what I have is yp is a1 t squared plus a0 t e to the minus t. Um, and then we have a different right-hand side. So minus 3 t e to the minus t. So that's what we'll be matching against. OK. Um, now, like before, we need a first and second derivatives. Um, this is going to be a little messier than before. What do we need to use that we didn't need last time as far as taking derivatives? What rule? Yeah, we've got to use a product rule because we have a polynomial here times an exponential. So what we're going to get is, um, all right, so e to the minus t times the um, derivative of this. So that's 2a1t plus a0. Um, and then we have this polynomial times the derivative of e to the, forgot the t, times the derivative of e to the minus t, but that's going to be minus e to the minus t. Okay. So that's the um, uh, first derivative. And what I'm going to do here is, in both cases, you have a polynomial times e to the minus t. So because I have to take the derivative again, I'm just going to try to condense this. Um, so I know I'm going to have a polynomial times e to the minus t. Because e to the minus t, you notice, know, is a common factor in everything. So then we'll have is a1 t squared plus the coefficient of t. Oh, wait, that's going to be minus. Right. Minus a1 t squared plus 2a1 minus a0 times t. And then the constant term is just this a0 here. Um, so now I have that for my first derivative. Um, so now I take a second derivative. It's, it's going to work pretty similar to before, because before I had a polynomial times e to the minus t. And now I have that situation yet again. So I'm going to take the derivative of this polynomial. So that's minus 2a1t plus 2a1 minus a0 times e to the minus t. And then I have this times the derivative of this. So that's going to give me minus all this. Okay. Um, now, I want to, just as I condensed the first derivative, I want to condense the second derivative also. 
And now I'm going to have a polynomial of degree 2 minus t. So if I gather up like any um, terms of degree 2, there's only one t squared. It's right here. So I've minus a minus a1 t squared. The minus is canceled. Okay. And then if I look at coefficients of t, I'm going to have um, minus a minus a0. And I have minus 2a1, and again, minus 2a1, so minus 4a1. And then any constant terms, I'm going to have um, 2a1 minus a0, and then minus a0 again. So I'm going to have 2a1 minus 2a0. E to the minus t. So that is my condensed second derivative. So now, all three of these items, the particular solution itself, its first derivative condensed, and then the condensed second derivative need to be substituted in here and matched against um, minus 3t e to the minus t. So questions up to this point. So as you can imagine, the algebra is a bit messy. Proceed carefully. Okay. So So for substitution, what you have is into y double prime minus 2y prime minus 3y is equal to minus 3t e to the minus t. Um, <clears throat> OK. So, so second derivative, I have a1 t squared plus 4 minus 4. a0 minus 4a1 t plus 2a1 minus 2a0 times e to the minus t. So that's the second derivative. And then I have minus 2 times the first derivative. minus 3 times a particular solution itself. And that is set equal to the right side. OK. <clears throat> so, so what you want to do is Well, actually, before I do that, um, let's. Okay. Now, let's have an exponential in every term. So, those can go away. Um, then, what you want to do is. Group by um, powers of t. Okay. okay. So first, we look for all terms involving um, t squared. So I have a one t squared plus 2a1t squared from over here. And then over here, I have minus 3a1t 
t squared. Um, but all balls will turn out to be zero. <clears throat> okay. Um, next, we move on to um, terms involving t to the first power. All right, so that was t squared. All right, so for t, we have a0 minus 4a1 minus 4a1 plus 2a0. And then I have minus uh, 3a0. Um, and finally, any constant terms we need to uh, we need to gather. So for constant terms, I have two a one minus two a zero from over here, and then I have um, minus two a zero over here, and there aren't any constant terms uh, down there. Um, okay. Now, there's some simplifying can be done here. I have uh, a0 plus 2a0, which is 3a0, minus 3a0. Those will cancel. Okay. <clears throat> And then this condenses to 2a1 minus 4a0. So this condenses to minus 8a1 times t. All right, so after you group by powers of t, this is what you get. Um, now all of that has to be matched, again, right-hand side. So we can forget about this part now. It can turn out to be zero anyway. But so if you match this against the right hand side, what do we have? We have minus eight a one t must be equal to minus three t because of a minus three t right here, and then we have. 2a1 minus 4a0 must be equal to 0. Why? Because there's no term in here on the right side that's a constant times e to the minus t. <clears throat> so all of that has to, uh, has to go away. So now, these are the equations that you solve for a0 and a1, the unknown parameters in your particular solution. So for the first equation, we get a1 is equal to 3 eighths. Um, and then you substitute that into the other equation and solve. And you get a0 is equal to um, 3 sixteenths. <coughs> So now you finally have your particular solution. So your particular solution is equal to, so you fill those in for a0 and a1, and we get uh, 3 eighths t squared plus 3 sixteenths t times e to the minus t. So questions about what happened there. So as you can see, you can get pretty messy. Um, there are cases where you need to use the product rule to take the first and second derivatives of your of the form of your particular solution. Um, and also, as you can see, be very careful with, with the algebra. <clears throat> Uh, 
let's see. Well, I can definitely fit in one more example. Okay. Well, I actually have two here. But I think if I can't do both of them, I can do the other one on Wednesday. y double prime plus 4y is equal to 3 sine 2t. Um, so first you solve the homo homogeneous problem, so we solve y double prime plus 4y is equal to 0. Um, so the characteristic equation is r squared plus 4 is equal to 0. So what would the roots be in that case? Plus or minus 2i. Plus or minus 2i. R squared is equal to minus 4, so that's going to give us complex roots. So therefore, a particular solu solution is going to be a constant times cosine 2t. Plus the number constant times sine of 2t. <laughs> Okay, so now we have our homogeneous solution. So then we have the form <coughs> of a particular solution we need to figure out. So in this case, we have a sine times only a constant. So we have a polynomial of degree 0, which is a constant, times sine of, of uh, bt, and there's no exponential. Uh, so this is the 3, and the b is the 2. Uh, so that's the, the pattern that it fits. So now, the particular solution is t to a power s times a polynomial of degree 0, which is just constant a0, times e to the a t cosine b t plus t v s, another constant b0, e to the a t sine b t. Now in this case, b is equal to 2. a, the coefficient exponential, is 0 because there is no exponential present. Um, so we're just going to have TDBS A0 cosine plus TDBS B0 sine. Um, now S is the number of times A plus BI is a root of your catch equation. In this case, A is 0, B is 2, so it's the number of times that 2I is a root. Therefore, S is equal to <clears throat> you're taking this against the roots of your characteristic equation. How many times does it appear? Come on. Once, because what are your roots? Plus 2i and minus 2i. 
2i occurs once in that set. Does everyone see what I mean by that? It's a very important step. <clears throat> so what I'm doing is you're, you're comparing, uh, you're checking for some value that's a member of a set. So now I can fill in all these particulars. Now I have t constant cosine 2t plus t times another constant sine 2t. So now we can carry out what well, we need the derivatives of that. Once again, going to be a pain because of the product rule. So, so yp is t a0 cosine 2t plus t b0 sine 2t. So now we have a derivative. Um, so using a product rule on uh, each term. So I have a0 and I have cosine 2t minus 2t sine 2t, because derivative of cosine is minus sine. Um, and then over here, I have b0 times sine 2t times the derivative of t, which is 1. Then I have plus 2t cosine 2t. <clears throat> Um, and then, unfortunately, we need the uh, second derivative. So, product rule again. So, I'm going to have, all right, so here we have minus 2 sine 2t. And the derivative of this will again require a product rule minus 2 sine 2t minus 4t cosine 2t. Um, plus b0 times the derivative of all this. So that's going to be 2 cosine 2t plus 2 cosine 2t. And then I have minus 4t sine 2t. <clears throat> okay. Um, so now all of this gets substituted to y double prime plus 4y is equal to 3 sine 2t. Uh, at least we don't have, have, there's no first derivative, so we don't need to substitute it. We still needed it on the way to the second. So, let's see. I can condense a little bit. Cosine 2t, and this is minus 4 sine 2t. So that helps a little bit. Um, OK. So now, y, yp double prime plus 4yp um, so that's going to be a0 minus 4 sine 2t minus 4t cosine 2t plus b0 4 cosine 2t minus 4t sine 2t plus um, a0 t cosine 2t, oh, that, oh, that's times 4, plus 4 b0 t sine 2t. 
And all of that is matched against 3 sine 2t. Um, now, we have four types of terms. Um, OK. I have, I have four times on the um, on the left side. How much time do I have? Oh, I have one minute left. <laughs> Dang it. Um, okay. So we have uh, sine by themselves, and then uh, cosine and sine times uh, sine terms by themselves. I just have that one. Cosine terms by themselves. Um, and then I have um, okay. that's for the other terms I have minus four a zero t cosine two t. Oh, actually, we have some cancellations. So minus 4a0 cos t cosine 2t and plus 4a0 t cosine 2t. So that term, these terms cancel. And then similarly, these terms will cancel. Um, so that's all that's left. And that is equal to 3 sine 2t. Well, there's no cosine on the right side. So b0 has to be 0. Um, and then as for the sine term, we have minus 4a0 is equal to 3. So a0 is equal to minus 3 fourths. So your particular solution is minus 3 fourths uh, t cosine 2t. So this happens fairly often that certain terms will cancel, thus simplifying the algebra uh, that follows. But what you're doing is you're comparing left and right sides. Uh, there. So, well, I have to stop. But uh, so I'll stick around a bit for, for any questions about this or other things.